My name is Eric Morris, and I am the producer and host of Non-Typical Outdoorsman TV, the most diverse outdoor show on the planet. So I specialize in introducing people to hunting. I have a personal passion for getting more minorities involved in hunting, shooting in the outdoors. This yeah. is my job. This is what I do. <laughs> and I saw you have been doing some safaris yeah. and things like that. Is yeah. that part of the TV show, or was that it beforehand? Is. Okay, it is. Yeah. It's part of the TV show, but I'm all about showing the things and people we don't traditionally see. Show people who look like me out there hunting, say, hey, yeah, yeah. you hunt too. And so I go all over hunting, and I like to show different aspects because some people who have television shows or hunting shows they only want to do deer hunting I keep it mixed up with hog bear deer African safari game yeah if it flies or swims or crawl I hunt it uh -huh. my assurance that my passion is working and is useful is when I have people across the country calls, hey man, I appreciate you introducing me to hunting. Hey, you know, uh, I'm glad I met you. My sons want to hunt now, my wife want to hunt. Yeah. And I have that all the time. People always, you know, they make me seem larger than life for some reason. But I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching, for listening. we got a great show lined up for you today. We're hanging out here at Buffalo Ridge Refuge before a squirrel hunt that we're going to be doing here in West Tennessee tomorrow. So this is a fun conversation we're going to have around the table here. Mr. Don King's helping me come. Yeah, up. yeah, Jason. I'm excited about this episode. That kind of takes me back to where I started. Squirrel hunting. There That's you go. Good. Squirrel hunting 101, yeah. I think most people start there. I think you're right, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, before we dive into this conversation to meet these folks, do you want to touch on uh, some of the promotions around the radio yeah you know we're we're up to 24 uh radio stations now across the state and um and we're growing our tv list too the yeah. community stations across the state are really embracing the show and we appreciate that and um and uh thanks to todd for making the show visually uh compelling you know and uh, more so than just us standing here talking exactly and uh but we uh, we appreciate that and uh, appreciate all the help we get across the state for spreading the word yeah yeah, and if, you, if you're not a, a radio listener or a, a guy who watches TV, guy gal who watches TV, find us out there on YouTube. Uh, we're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Uh, you can uh, follow us on your favorite podcasting app. So just, just however you ingest media, find us out there. We're well, everywhere. We're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But today I'm excited to have Eric Morris with us from Non-Typical Outdoorsman and Jim Cucuruto from Outdoor Stewards of Conservation Foundation. Mm -hmm. Jim's been with us before, but this is Eric's first time, right. and I'm excited to have uh, these guys on the show with us and just talk outdoors and, mm -hmm. and, and learn a little bit about you, Eric, and, okay. and the, the stuff that you're in town for. You're here in Tennessee <laughs> to hunt this, this week, oh, so yeah. uh, I'm hey, excited. Hey, first off. Eric, thank you for your service to our oh. country. Oh, well, you're more than I, I welcome. I appreciate you're you. You're more than welcome, Don. Very much. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. And then we'll and we'll dive into some of that. Yeah. Too, while we're yeah. At. But yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, well, Eric, uh, I guess tell the listeners and introduce yourself. Yeah. Kind of tell tell them who you are. All right. And uh, and we'll dive in some more. All right. Well, hey, y'all. My name is Eric Morris, and I am the producer and host of Non Typical Outdoorsman TV, the most diverse outdoors show on the planet. And, um, you know, I specialize in introducing people to hunting. I have a personal passion for getting more minorities involved in hunting and shooting in the outdoors. So uh, I'm a three-time Army combat veteran, as you mentioned, Don, yeah. you know, for my service. So yes. that's what I do. And uh, I also work with Jim to help mm -hmm. introduce more industry personnel to hunting and to get them to have their uh, employees to come with someone when, uh -huh. it goes, when it comes to hunting. So that's what I do. I mean, I, I eat, sleep, live. The outdoors. This yeah. is my job. This is what I do. <laughs> have you always been an outdoorsman? I have. And my I always tell the joke. So those who may have heard me say this before will know what I'm about to say. But my daddy just quit asking if I was his son about two years ago. Because, uh, you know, I am, you know, completely different. You know, he... He, he's a, he likes to farm and grow, have gardens. Okay. He likes to work on old cars. Yeah. But when it comes to going into the woods, he's not that kind of guy. And so with me, I've always grown up this way. You know, he taught me how to shoot when I was eight years old with a BB gun. And so I go out, you know, and I, I have always, always, um, you know, like love the outdoors. Uh -huh. And my parents, you know, sometimes during the holidays or whatever, when I'm over there, they were like, hey, remember that time when Eric wanted, used to want to be an Indian? You know, <laughs> I'm like, hey, I still do. Because, you know, growing up, you know, I would, I loved the outdoors. I mean, I just immersed in nature. Yeah. And so now, when I grew up, I wasn't um, in the country all the time. I was right there in town. 
but I would roam the woods, you know, every chance I got. So, so was there anybody in particular that kind of guided you through the first time or, or well, got, you, got you into the hunting aspect of it? Not really. I kind of like, you know, trial by failure sometimes, <laughs> you know, and trial yeah. by error sometimes, because when it comes to hunting, I always wanted to hunt. Uh-huh. And I know there's not... Mm-hmm. correct and politically correct to shoot game birds like robins and cardinals and blue jays but <laughs> yeah. that's what many of us kids shot uh growing up because yeah. you want to hunt something uh but with the squirrel hunting you know oh yeah tying right. back into this event we're gonna do this weekend the yeah. squirrel hunting is where i cut my teeth on it uh it was when i i did not shoot my first deer until i was 30 years old uh-huh. and so that was you know several years ago you know many years ago but mm-hmm. um i had people that you know mentors and people that i would kind of latch on to mm-hmm. and they would uh you know kind of show me the ropes because squirrel hunting is different from big game hunting i did not shoot Definitely. my first deer till i was 30 for a reason because you don't hunt deer and bear like you hunt squirrels. Mm. So I was just out there just wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so where was this first time or these, these early years? Where'd well, you grow up? Talladega, Alabama. Okay. Born and raised. I'm straight country. Yeah. So uh, born and raised in Talladega, Alabama. And um, most of my hunting stemmed from, the, I guess, the, uh, the uh, neighborhood. Every patch of woods around, I was in them. You know, oh, yeah. Backyards. Um, I did not shoot my deer, like I said, until I was older, but, um, I was, I shot my first deer on my parents' property. Okay. They bought some, uh, some land out in the country. Okay. We moved from town out to the country and I shot my first deer there. But since that time, y'all, I've been all over the world, literally hunting. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I was, I was browsing your, uh, your, your website and some of your social media and things mm-hmm. like that. And I saw you have been, you know, doing some, you know. Uh, safaris yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Those are those are pretty cool. Is that part of the TV show or was that it beforehand? Is. Okay, it is. It's yeah. part of the TV show because, you know, uh, part of my intro when the show comes on, uh, I say, you know, I'm all about showing the things and people we don't traditionally see. Mm. So I have to show the things that uh, show people who look like me out there hunting and say, hey, you, yeah. know, you hunt too. And so I go all over hunting and I like to show different aspects because some people who have television shows or hunting shows, they only want to do deer hunting. You know, it's only so many deer hunts you can watch before you get bored. <laughs> you know, I love duck hunting. I'm an avid duck hunter. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you can only watch so much duck hunting outdoor shows before you say, <laughs> okay, I want something else. So I try to, I keep it mixed up with hog, bear, deer, uh, African safari game, yeah. uh, small game. If it breathes, flies, or swims, or crawl, I hunt it. Uh huh. So, yeah. Mm. Well, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you say, well, people like me that look like me don't hunt. A right. lot. Why do you think that is? Well, the thing is, we we do. A lot of minorities do hunt. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've oftentimes said, Jason, you know, we're just not shown. We're not showcased. That's you know, you, you don't look and see something like this and see a black person uh-huh. on there. Uh, you, uh, like I said, and we may get this later on though, but when I created the show, it wasn't because it was my lifelong dream to be, you know, to have my own outdoor show. Every hunter out there dreams of having their own show. Uh huh. Not me. I looked around and I said, you know what, you know. I'm all for equal opportunity. I'm all for, you know, integration. But I don't see any black people on, on outdoor shows. Why is that? And I've grown up watching them all day. I'm the kind of guy that was sitting in front of Pursuit Channel or Outdoor Channel all day, all weekend. <laughs> yeah. Only get up to use the bathroom and get something to eat and come back and watch TV all day. And so after a while of not seeing someone who looks like you, you start to wonder and say, you know what? Why is that? Yeah. But what we do hunt, I will say that we do hunt. There are some stigmas out there uh, where some people believe, some black people believe that Black people don't hunt. Mm. And I like to address those kind of people, you know, right up, you know, up front and say, well, yes, we do. Just because you don't see us on magazine covers, just because you don't see us on TV or on podcasts, uh, don't mean that we don't hunt. Yeah. And so that's a whole other topic as to why they, you know, some people, some black people don't want to hunt. I mean, they they have a certain education status and they kind of turn their nose up and look at hunting as if something beneath them. Uh And I like to, you know, grab them by the uh, back of the pants and snatch (laughs) them back and say, hey, this ain't beneath us. This is what we do. I'm a retired major from the Army, college educated, and I love hunting. Yeah. And so sometimes it's all about how how hunting is actually portrayed and how uh, people see themselves reflected and depicted in hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's, uh, I like how... You're all about getting people out there oh, yeah. and helping those people who, who may uh, grew up in the city and mm-hmm. and not in the country and not familiar with it. Right. You're, you're all about getting them out there and teaching them how to how, oh, to, yeah. how to get out there and enjoy the outdoors. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I just did a uh, event because I have a the television show. Then I have a nonprofit, uh, both by you know with a similar name. This is non tip Outdoorsman TV. Uh, my nonprofit is non tip Outdoorsman Incorporated. Okay. And the non tip Outdoorsman Incorporated, where we spend more time in the community's grassroots efforts, introducing people to hunting, shooting, the outdoors, and so forth. Uh huh. So this past weekend, um, Saturday morning, we did an event in Macon, Georgia, and we had five kids and uh, two sets of parents. 
And initially that event was going to be just for the kids. And so they was, you know, shooting and it, it didn't take them long. I believe in teaching kids how to shoot the right way with open sights uh -huh. versus a scope. There you because go. Because you give them a scope, you're going <laughs> to handicap them. That makes them tough. Makes right. it tougher. That's right. And so once they learn the fundamentals of shooting with an open sight, it's easy. So they kind of got that down, Pat. And the parents sitting there with their cell phones out and everything. And <laughs> I said, you know what? Parents, get up here and let you shoot too. And so uh -huh. two of the parents were from upstate New York. Hmm. And um, one guy had hunted, uh, had shot a handgun, mm -hmm. uh, a rifle, but not a shotgun. His wife had never shot a rifle. She shot a handgun, but no, no rifle. Uh -huh. And you'd be surprised, y'all, at how competitive some women are. You get them up there, and they idea their husbands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Both every time. I mean, every time. And, and, and one of them, one of the husbands, you know, he was a friend of mine. He got, you know, upset. Hey, why you always got to be so competitive? <laughs> because she's like, see, I shot more time than you did. Because shooting steel, we had the little steel targets. Shooting steel is fun oh yeah because yeah. you get that reactive you know a lot of times i like to have a clay target or Bing. a can yeah, yeah i yeah. sometimes take a can and shake it up for that extent of that report but you take that steel uh -huh. they hit it bing, and so that became addictive uh -huh. <laughs> so they were seeing how many times they can hit it straight but i'm all about introducing people to shooting hunting hunting the outdoors dogs guns the whole nine that's awesome yeah that is great well jim uh, thanks for being with us again. Uh, yeah. You've partnered with, with Eric on this and yeah. uh, uh, through some grants that you acquired. Right. Tell us a little bit about how that all came together and how the Outdoor sure. Stewards of Conservation ties in with well, all that. Well, thanks for having me again. I love being on Tennessee Wildcast. Yeah. I love the way you say Wildcast. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, Outdoor Stewards of Conservation Foundation is a nonprofit organization. And one of the ways that we can um, you know get some funds is through some grants through the federal government, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. So I've known Eric for 10 years. Yeah. I actually met him 10, 12 years ago at a conference where yeah. he's talking about diversity. And here we are 12 years <laughs> later yeah. talking about diversity. Right. So, yeah. you know, um, and we had the, uh, when I started Outdoor Stewards, I put a board together and asked Eric to be on that. And he, he's one of our board members. And we were talking about, you know, how can we move the needle and get more people involved? And that's through, you know, volume of, of showing diversity, you know, in the outdoors. And, you know, through my background working with the industry, you know, the Smith and Wessons and the Troys and the Mossbergs of the world, we figured let's pull them in and, and recruit from within. So we had this idea, let's, you know, do six episodes of right. non-typical outdoorsman TV. Mm -hmm. Let's recruit from Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agencies, uh, a first-time hunter. Let's recruit from the industry and, and Tennessee this is where everybody wants to be right Smith and Wesson is building a plant down here moving from Massachusetts yep, yep. Mm -hmm. um, Troy Industries just moved from Massachusetts two yep. years ago so a show pattern not long here. ago <laughs> there's a pattern <laughs> here right like everybody wants to come to Tennessee so we're, we're introducing some some folks mm. you know to squirrel hunting from the industry and the agency and then the goal of this grant project is to then uh, have TWRA say, hey, here's the story of Emily, and, you know, mm -hmm. we asked her to come with us, as Eric mentioned, <laughs> key word is come with, come with, words, yeah. right? and then, you know, you guys can then challenge your customers and say, hey, this is a great experience, it feels good to be a mentor, um, why don't you introduce somebody to the sport of hunting, right. fishing, or target shooting, yep. you know, tell us your story, and then maybe you guys can incentivize that with whatever, free hat or something like that, mm -hmm. but, you know, you'll get some content that you can use, you're engaging your customers, and then we bring the industry in, and they're really good at marketing, right, right? so right. they yeah. can then take this and reach out to their customer base, so, you know, Two people, hopefully, you know, can reach millions of people oh, yeah. with this. That's the, that's the goal of it, yeah. and we're excited about it. We did the first episode down in, uh, in Texas, Texas a couple of weeks ago with mm. Texas Park and Wildlife mm -hmm. and Primary Arms. Had a great show. Yeah, so excellent show. I know it's going to be tough to beat, but I, I like the lineup <laughs> we have here. And, yeah, and yeah. squirrel hunting is how I grew up doing mm -hmm. it. So, And I haven't squirrel hunted in 30 years, so I'm, I'm excited oh, to well, be a bystander good. and watch this mm -hmm. happen. All right. All right. Well, I know Emily comes from an ag background, so, okay. yeah. so you know, she's she spent time outdoors and that kind of thing, but I know she's really looking forward to this mm -hmm. uh, to this opportunity mm -hmm. tomorrow to yeah. to go on the squirrel hunt. Good, good. I hope we get a lot. I think we will. Yeah. I think we will. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're going to be able to watch this episode like early October, right? This uh, one is going to yeah. air? Yep. Yeah. It should be the first Saturday in October because I'm going to do um, episode one, which I'll talk about how the show all came to be okay along with a few other things and then the following week on saturday it'll be this episode right here that gotcha. we're about to do on Good. the pursuit network on right? pursuit pursuit channel right, right. Comes pursuit on pursuit. Channel. Mm -hmm. uh, well you you mentioned uh, jim that it's a never-ending struggle mm -hmm. you, you met each other what 12 years ago and you're still talking about the right. same thing yeah. yeah 
tell us a little bit about how what that struggle is, what that's like, and and right. and it's it's hard. And it's hard to get people introduced sometimes to, to what it is. It's great, you know, it's it, a great thing. I think it's you know kind of second nature to introduce your siblings. Well, you know, my sons, of course, yeah. You know, that doesn't count for recruitment. That's right. what you're supposed to do as yeah, a hunter, right. right? So what we're trying to do is reach out to those 60 million hats, right? Hunters, anglers, trappers, and shooters, and say to them, introduce somebody, ask them to come with you. And that's how we're going to increase participation because, you know, I, I did a lot of research over the years and uh, for the outdoor industry, and we know that hunting, we've, we've had some steady declines in hunting over the past couple of decades. Uh, but we also know the number one way, there's a lot of people on the fence that want to get into oh, the yeah. field. Uh -huh. And by far, the number one way to get them in the, is to have somebody they know and trust say, come with me. Come yeah. with. You know, come on, Don, let's go squirrel hunt. Mm -hmm. come on. You're not going to say no, right? So, right. Um, and, and we've done this now for a while. Yeah. And it's just, it's a cool feeling to be a mentor. And that's the thing we got to tell the audience, you know, it's, you'll feel better mm -hmm. having teach somebody to, to harvest their first animal than for you doing it to the hundredth time or teach them how, really teach them how to fish. I mean, yeah. going back to biblical times, right? You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and target shooting, that sound of that pling. And they, <laughs> every single time, this is the reaction, right? You know, uh, from that first time when they hit that target, for the radio listeners, they turn around and they smile at you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that oh, yeah. smile, oh, to yeah. see like a you know 45-year-old guy turn around and smile at you like a, like a <laughs> oh, five-year-old yeah. kid, uh -huh. it feels really good. So please get out there and introduce, you know, hunting, fish, and trapping or shooting to somebody. Just two magic words. Will yeah. you come with me? Yeah. I, I know my uh, struggles were a little bit different. I know my, my whole thing is this. I believe in answering the problem, and I'm a problem solver. And so for me, when I first, before I started the show, I was like, okay, I hear a lot of, you know, talking and going on about the uh, need to increase the, or the field of diversity gap, as they called it back mm -hmm. 10, 12 years ago. And so, uh, because this is nothing new, you know, when it comes to the minority side of the house, it's nothing new trying to get more minorities involved. It's been going on forever. And so when I came up with the show idea, I was like, okay, you know, here I am, I'm going to retire from the army. What am I going to do? And it wasn't my idea to have a television show. I started out as a fishing guide. Uh -huh. And so, um, you know, I moved over to the hunting side because I had been taking people on hunts for a while. But my uh, struggle has been getting more industry people involved in what I'm doing because I'm a guy that's a straight shooter. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, either we're going to do this or we're not. Yeah. And so with me, I'm like, I've been doing this all, the, I mean, for 13 years. I mean, it seemed like forever, but uh -huh. I've been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I came on uh, up with the idea to have a show, I'm like, okay, that's it. I get the show. I know tons of people. Take them out, introduce them. The industry, you know, they can be part of it. They can, you know, let's face it. If you take a new hunter out, they like hunting. They want to buy a gun. Mm. If they're or, or with a Mossberg or a Ruger or Smith & Wesson, then what gun do you, if they learn how to shoot and hunt with that gun, what kind of gun do you think they're going to buy themselves or their, or their, or their kids? Uh -huh. yeah. Well, I was in for a big, big disappointment because nobody from the industry was ready to get on board uh, with <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm still struggling a little bit with that. Huh. But, um, you know, my struggle, I would say the easy part for me is taking people to hunt. I have no problem going across the country, taking people here, taking groups of people here, groups of people there. I do it all the time. Yeah. I try to tell people, hey, I do this all the time. Y'all still trying to figure out how to crack the egg. <laughs> I'm eating French omelets over here <laughs> because I've been cracking eggs for, for 12 years, you know, but you know, that's my struggle. A lot of people say, hey, well, we don't really know about that. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of over that now because yeah. uh, we may get to this later on in the show, but my self-worth, my... Um, assurance that my plan my passion is working and is useful is when i have people across the country calls hey man i appreciate you introducing me to hunting hey you know uh, i'm glad i met you you know my my, my sons want to hunt now my wife want to hunt mm -hmm. and so i don't get my gratification from the industry mm -hmm. you know i get my gratification from the person in the grassroots community in their neighborhood yeah. and i have that all the time people always you know they made me seem larger than life for some reason i'm not you know i'm just a regular guy <laughs> you've got a lot of folks under you now that are starting to mentor that you taught and now they're yeah. mentors. Yeah, and the thing about it, like I said, I am, um, you know, I don't sometimes count my, I guess, accomplishments, but I've done a lot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when, when my tombstone is placed over <laughs> my grave, they'll probably have something cool to say about how much of an impact I made with hunting in minorities. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned me teaching people, having people on to me. Yeah, uh, I'm a hunter education instructor. I was Georgia's top hunter education instructor for 2021. Not to say that I was the best, but I just happened to meet the requirements that they were looking for to select someone. And mm -hmm. so what I do, because I'm all about the results. So what I do is I inspire other people and challenge other people to walk the walk like I do. 
And so I have, well, I think last count, I think seven people I've, um, m I guess, motivated and encouraged to become 100 education instructors, not just to take the class, gotcha. but to become instructors like me, because it's like a race. I'm racing with them. Like, hey, y'all, keep up with me. This is this is a standard. This is what you got to do. And so they, I would tell the whole industry, all your listeners, all your viewers, there's no shortage of minority people who are looking to hunt. Mm. Oftentimes, it just starts with a, hey, come with, as Jim mentioned earlier. Yeah. And have one, the trust issue. I can talk about this stuff forever, but you have to have trust. And they have to have trust in you primarily. Right. Because, um, you know, that's a whole different topic, but they want to hunt. They uh -huh. want to get out there and shoot. They want to be introduced. Um, but they, they need to trust you first. Right. Well, I think it's a great thing y'all are doing here, partnering together, you know, and, and trying to educate the, the industry folks, right. the agency folks, the, the hunter, just you know, the, the angler or whatever it may be. And, and, and I think pulling all that together and you can say, hey, we really mean this and, and we're legit, you know, we're, you know, and I think those industries, those sponsors and things will kind of come in at that point. You know, once they see that, you know, you're working with state agencies, right. it's, it's not a game. It's the real deal. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll have some fun, too. Either right. way. Right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Exactly. The, the, the bottom line is to introduce people. That's the bottom line, because right. whether the industry come on board or not, um, knowing that we made a difference, you know, knowing that we've given people opportunity, because once you plant that seed then it's just a matter of time before they start planting seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my you know, biggest accomplishments, I'm going to shout him out, his name is Darrell Smith. He has uh, Minority Outdoor Alliance. Darrell was okay. 25 years old when he found me and I didn't have the first idea about hunting, didn't know nothing about hunting. I taught him how to hunt, introduced him to upland bird hunting because I got my Chesapeake Bay Retriever out there in the car right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so he's getting old, but he's still hanging in there. But uh, I introduced him to upland bird hunting, introduced him to shotguns, to, you know, because some people just don't know. Uh -huh. Darrell is what I would classify as the perfect example of what can happen when you introduce an adult to hunting. Right. Because a lot of people focus on the kids. Mm -hmm. I like to focus on the adults. Yeah. Because Darrell has an organization. His organization is doing great. Uh, Well-sponsored, you know doing great and so i'm proud of him that's great i just got to go plant more seeds to get more people like that out and there. i think you you really hit it uh on the head when you said trust mm -hmm. you know when mm -hmm. you when you get somebody who can trust you because they may be looking from the outside thinking you know i'd really like to do that but i just hate to ask dumb questions you know i don't want to i don't want to <laughs> so, i don't want to embarrass myself that, that's not big of a deal don as them Knowing that nothing's going to happen to them. Exactly. And but that's I, where the trust come in. Uh, I have people, and I tell people up front, I say, they want to come to me. I'm good, but I can't take everybody in America hunting. <laughs> you know, I just can't. <laughs> you know, but I tell people all the time, I say, look, if you want to hunt, there's nothing wrong with going hunting with a white guy, having a white guy take you out. And like, yeah, yeah, I know, but you know, I want to, you know, I want to go with you. <laughs> I'm like, well, I can't take you, 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 everybody else, you know. I say, so my thing is, I always say, y'all, is this the message. A lot of times is more, in some cases, is more important than the appearance of the messenger. In other instances, the appearance of the messenger is more important. But overall, I would say that the message is more important because we all are hunters here. We all hunt. I may look a different way. You may look a different way. But the message is we hunt. And so mm. I've taken people out who have um, never hunted with white guys before. They go out there. Guards are up. You know, mm -hmm. before, by the time the hunt leaves... They best friends. They yeah. change phone numbers. They making <laughs> plans to hunt, and so that's what I'm all about. You know, spending that bridge, that gap, spending uh -huh. that gap, building that bridge, mm -hmm. and getting more people out there hunting together. So that's me. That's neat. Yeah, a, a lot of the mentor things that happen here on this property, you know, it, it's the women's events, it's yeah. the, the wounded soldier events, it's the kids events, and mm -hmm. and sometimes it works better when you have women helping instruct and oh, you yeah, have you know oh, yeah. the same color of person yeah. helping instruct. Yeah. But oh, yeah. but we're all hunters, we're all anglers, we love love the outdoors, and mm -hmm. I think it's great that you know we can share it any way we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Jim, I, mm -hmm. can you touch on you? I love how you tell this, <laughs> how you how you lay it out. But how does funding work for for an agency? And and it, sure. it's important for those people to buy a license and get out there. No, the reason we're doing this is so the legacy lives on, and the outdoors right. strives and continues. You know. Yeah. So there's the simplest way to explain how conservation is funded is in America is three parts. You've got uh, manufacturers of archery product or fishing poles and lures, guns and ammo, and they pay an excise tax. And that equates to $2 billion a year between archery, guns and ammo, fishing product. And then, of course, you've got um, 
the state agencies that are the benefactor, those excise taxes, they get filtered down to TWRA and all the other organizations, get your hands dirty, mm -hmm. you know, making sure you're, I see out, right outside, you guys are planting sunflowers mm -hmm. for dove season. Yep. So you're managing wildlife and you're managing habitat, right? And you can't do that without funding, right? So right. the third piece of that is the hats, the 60 million active hunters, anglers, trappers, and shooters that are buying hunting and fishing licenses and, and guns and ammo and bows and fishing poles. Right, right. Um, so without them, right, you guys don't exist. You yeah. know, the Smith & Wesson's out of business, right? So we need all three parts. You, can, you know, not gonna, two parts ain't going to work. One part's not going to work. You need all three parts again. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Smith & Wesson Troy here today uh, on the squirrel hunt coming with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we get TWRA on the squirrel hunt. So that's kind of, you know, one of my, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to work with both industry and agency over the past decade so mm -hmm. i'm trying to put it to good use and and you know be the matchmaker and get everybody on the same page there because we've got the same goal we want to get more people mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. um and we want to you know grow our ranks a little bit yeah. like i said hunting's on a slow decline um you know target shooting and fishing are doing pretty good and that's mm -hmm. because of you know some marketing and advertising and and recruitment efforts that we've done um but it is harder to do it with hunting so you know that's why eric and I are here and, and yeah. you know you've got some great staff Jen was news can your staff helps us out tremendously and um, there's a lot of people that I mean it doesn't all you have to do is ask um, you know for support and all the agencies love doing it so uh, it's a pretty it's an easy job but uh, you know it's still <laughs> um, you know we've got a, a challenge of growing those numbers because one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one mentoring is not a one and done it's right. a commitment mm -hmm. and especially on the hunting side of things yep. so yep. that's what we're trying to teach people is say hey, you know you, right. you're going to get that great experience but it, you got to prepare for the long term don't mm -hmm. don't get into it if you're just going to yeah. take somebody out one mm -hmm. time yeah. yeah well don i know you want uh wanted to hear the story again we heard it oh, off man, we heard yeah. it off air but <laughs> i got to hear about your friend vincent oh, oh man uh, as it is a squirrel hunt you so. yeah yeah so this and is a perfect time to tell that story he's quite the marksman for for squirrel hunting, but but he hadn't developed a taste that he thought for <laughs> for the animal itself after, right. on, after the harvest. Right. So, tell us about it. So as, as as they always say, so see what happened was <laughs> Vince was uh, I, I did a, I did a hunt down in um, Louisiana with uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. One of the refuge hunts I was doing for them, I got contracted to do some introductory type hunts for the refuge. Uh -huh. And so Vince, uh, one of the guys' name was Vincent. He showed up, and uh, the whole crew they were avid avid squirrel hunters. So uh, they showed up and um, shot a few. And uh, Vince had mentioned, he said, hey, you know what? I shot um, oh, I, mean, I shot like you know, 172 squirrels. I'm like, man, your freezer should be four, right? No, man, I don't need that. And that so, wasn't in one day. That was like right, the, whole the, season, course the whole season. season. Yeah, yeah. So what he did, he went ahead and said, so what did you do? He said, uh, I give them away. So the guy who had the squirrel dog said, hey, you know, down there, help, you know, the guy in the hunt. He said, hey, look, uh, I'll bring some squirrels for y'all. Y'all can try them. I'll fry them. He said, I like to eat mine cold. So he brought in the squirrels the next day, and Vincent didn't want to try any at first. But then he went ahead, he tried one, and he took a bite. He looked around, he said, you mean to tell me I've been giving away this? <laughs> he said, I bet you, I tell you what, I'm not giving away now another, that's a southern slang, now, mean no more, yeah, now another yeah. squirrel uh -huh. for the rest of my life. And so exactly. he cannot believe how great yep. the squirrel actually tastes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's that's great. Part yeah, of really the recruitment is, is the food aspect right. of it. Too. It right. is, yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll never get anything uh, as organic as the outdoor, a deer, mm -hmm. a turkey, a, yeah. a squirrel, whatever Any, it may anything be. Anything wild. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good for you. Uh, and it's fun to, to chase after them. You know, oh, yeah. it's, it's a oh, fun yeah. sport, but it'll also feed the family. It will, yeah. yeah. So. You know, they actually they have they actually had a uh, rifle, you no know, Kentucky squirrel rifle, I think it was. You know, thirty two caliber uh -huh. uh, muzzle loader. But so squirrel hunting is a way to sustain yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Well, uh, we're going to run out of time, but real quick, how do they find your show online? Um, you can find it by going to Pursuit Channel. Go to my website www.ntotv.com, and there's information there as to how you can find the show. Awesome, awesome. We'll keep coming back. We'll put a link in the in the comments down below for for. Uh, for Eric's uh, channel and Jim's content as well. And uh, we just appreciate everybody tuning in. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank, thank, thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. Y'all have fun tomorrow, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to knock them out. <laughs> this is Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do.
Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.